First Kings chapter 17, very familiar verses. I'm just going to pull a thought out of here, a very simple thought, and give it to you tonight. I hope it will be a blessing to you. You pray for us. We drive home tonight. We have to have our daughter-in-law at the, at the doctor in the morning, and I have to take her, so we were driving home tonight. So you pray for her. She had a seizure, as you know, as of this morning. You pray the Lord to work all that out. Amen. And uh, she can't drive for six months, and that puts hardships on everything. And uh, But you pray, and uh, that's just what parents do. They just take and help and just do what you can. Amen. Amen. But you pray for her. The Lord will touch her and help her. Okay, in First Kings chapter 17, of course, you know, Elijah comes on the scene in verse 1. And then uh, God sent him down to Cherdiff in verse 2, down through verse 7. He sends him to Cherdiff, which is about 90 miles from anything. And uh, he said, I've commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Wonderful story right there. How every morning, how every morning without fail, and every evening the ravens brought food in for the first year of that uh, famine. And then you come to verse 8. He's been there for an uh, appointed time. And verse 8, the Bible said, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zerapath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose, went to Zerapath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, <clears throat> I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my sons, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me there of a little cake first, and bring it to him, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. She did... And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. All kinds of things we can preach out of here. You can preach about that widow woman and her faith and her trust in the Lord, her obedience. And because of her faith and obedience, God blessed her uh, in a wonderful way. If you want the blessings of God, you've got to have some faith and be obedient sometime Amen. to the things of the Lord. You can talk about, you can talk about the word there in these, these verses. He says, he's commanded with a woman to feed thee there. And uh, if, he, if Elijah had went anywhere else, he'd have been on his own. <laughs> but he had to be there. Yeah. In fact, in Cherdiff, he said, go to Cherdiff, I've commanded the ravens to feed thee there. If he'd have went anywhere else besides Cherdiff, He'd been on his own. But when he got there, it was God's responsibility to take care of him. Amen. You know, when we get there, which is the will of God, that's God's responsibility to take care of us from then on out. Amen? Amen. So we talk about that. You can talk about the wine. You can talk about the bread. You can talk about all kinds of things in these verses. But I, I want to talk about I want to talk about this barrel. I want to take about, talk about this barrel. In verse two, uh, 12, it says, had a handful of meal in a barrel. And if you go on down, it talks about in verse 14, the barrel of meal shall not waste. In verse 16, and the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the curse of the oil fail. And uh, just for a few minutes, let me talk to you about there's more in the barrel than you think. There's more in the barrel than you think. Now, this here's this lady. In those days, those days they didn't have pantries and things like we got now. Uh, I, I run some reference on it, and and uh, they they had that meal barrel, and that was uh, that was their livelihood. That was everything. That was an important factor in the house. And I thought about this meal barrel, and I want I want to kind of tie it in to the church. I'm going to talk about this meal barrel and compare it to the church. And you know, there's really more in the church than we think. Amen. And there's more on this meal barrel than we think. 
And I thought about first of all in this mill barrel there was hope. There was hope in this mill barrel. Did you know this out of all the all of the things in that house and, and we'll just do it as a normal uh, situation because we'll understand it. Of all the things that's in the house, maybe there was a stove, maybe there was a refrigerator, probably didn't have them in them days, I know, but uh, there was a chair, there was a couch, there was different things, a bed, all kinds of things in that house, all kinds of things that they was involved in, all things that they participated in and used, uh, uh, my friend, but the greatest thing in that house was this meal barrel. The greatest thing. You, couldn't, you, you could do without the chair, but you couldn't do without the meal barrel. <laughs> you, you could do without the couch. You could do without the bed. You could sleep on the floor. You could do a lot of things and get rid of a lot of stuff. But this meal barrel was important in that house because, uh, uh, my friend, their livelihood, and everything, their hope, their hope was in that meal barrel, my friend, of, of having a life. Take the, meal, take the chair out. It wouldn't matter. It wouldn't affect their life at all. But if you took the mail barrel out of there and done away with it, there was no life. There was no hope for life inside, outside of that mail barrel. You understand what I'm saying? And I'll say, my friend, there was hope every day, every day. My friend, they worked, they labored, they done whatever they had to do, but their hope was in coming back to the evening and getting a meal, and my friend, and, and eating that meal, and through that meal, that's what sustained them in life. Amen. You know what? In the church today, that's the only thing that's got hope. <laughs> yeah, right. You can't find no hope for life outside of the church. Amen? No hope without side of Christ. Uh, there is no hope whatsoever. Amen? You can have everything in this world, it's going to pass away. <laughs> Amen? And, and, and there's nothing in this world that will produce life. In fact, the Bible said the wage of sin is death. And all the sins and all the things of the world brings death. Amen. And I'm telling you what, in the, in the church today, there's hope. There's life. You, you know, I found life in the church. <laughs> you say, well, I didn't get saved in the church. You get saved because of the church. Right. You got saved because somebody preached the gospel. My friend, somebody heard the gospel. Somebody come and told you the gospel. And my friend, you heard it through the preaching of the singing. My friend, and, and the singing of the songs and the Holy Ghost convicted you. And my friend, salvation, my friend, came to you because somebody, my friend, had the church and preached through the church and held the church and got saved in the church, testified in the church. And our hope, our hope for life is outside, is, is, is in the church. Amen. The only hope we got. <laughs> the only thing going to last. Amen. I'm glad my hope ain't in the Pope, ain't you? Amen. Amen. He probably ain't going to make it anyway if he don't get born again. Right. Amen. Amen. I'm glad my hope, my friend, is not in money because it's going to pass away. As Brother Jordan talked this morning, I'm glad my hope ain't in gold. <laughs> Everybody strives for gold. That's the cheapest thing in heaven. We're going to walk on it. Amen. <laughs> my hope ain't in gold. My hope ain't in riches. My hope, my friend, ain't all. It ain't even in the splendors of heaven. But my hope. My hope is in Christ Jesus. In fact, you go over in the book of Ephesians, he talks about, my friend, at that time, we was without hope. <laughs> we was without hope, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. And we was aliens from all of that. But the Bible said, but my, uh, even now, we were dead in sin. But he goes on and says, but now, but now, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, what he loved us, has uh, uh, he saved us, not of works. That's any mention. Boy, he's glad our hopes ain't works. <laughs> Some of you really be on your road to hell if it's in works. Amen. Sure. We couldn't work enough, my friend, to, to, to create a hope to go to heaven. Amen. <laughs> but the hope, her hope every day, their hope, their livelihood, their life consisted around that meal barrel. I'm going to tell you, there was a day that people's hope and their life centered around the church. Amen. And their life was built around the church and had everything uh, stemmed around the church. You didn't make no... You didn't even make no decisions uh, in your life, uh, and my friend, without considering the church uh, being a part of your life. Amen. It was the hope of raising your family. It was the hope of your life. It was everything. The church, this meal barrel was everything, and the most important thing in that home was that meal barrel. Amen. Amen. Not only did that meal barrel, my friend, it produced hope, but you know what? There was help in that meal barrel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this brother that was here this morning and with us and and uh, visiting with us this morning from, from uh, up in Iowa, uh, we was talking, and he, he's a dairy farmer, and he, he milks two, him and his boys, they milk 250 cows twice a day. And he said, I work uh, early every morning, I'm up, 
And he said, I go and milk the cows, and then we got other things to do. And he said, we came back of eating, we milked the cows. He said, it's used about 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock the time we get back into the house and uh, from milking and everything and shut everything down and our day's through. And he said, every day when I get back, he said, you know what, preacher? He said, my wife. He said, my wife always got a hot meal ready for me. He said, she got a hot meal cooked and ready. Feeds us and, and my friend and take and you know what? We've worked all day. We've labored all day. We're tired. We're weary. We're weak. And we get that meal. And you know what? We get strength from that meal that she's produced. Well, these people right here, uh, this widow woman, my friend, her husband was gone. And this widow woman, I'm sure she struggled. Uh, and in those days, you, you read about widows, and I don't have time to go through all that, but you should read about widows in the Bible that was different than widows in the day. And my friend, listen, she had to labor. She had to do things to keep things going. And my friend, every day, she took that meal barrel and she found bread and she found a little cake and she found strength, my friend, to go on and keep on functioning. And I'm going to tell you what, there's help at the church. My friend, we come in here and we fought the devil all week and we've labored, we served. Ain't it good to come back in here and my friend, get a meal from God and my friend, get a song from the Lord and get a message from God and get a prayer time with God and get some strength and go out of here. You can't find help when you're in a crisis. You can't find help when you're weak and weary. You can't find help like you can at the house of God. <laughs> you ever come in the house of God and just feel like you just can't go on no over? You ever come in? I've been, I went to the house of God before. Brother Mike said, well, I didn't really. You know, I tell, okay, I don't really feel like going now. <laughs> Amen? Even us preachers get that way. Hey Amen, I don't feel like going tonight. I just, you know, told wife one time, I said, I don't know where I'm going tonight. I said, you've got to go. You're the pastor. Amen. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, we, and sometimes we come in, and, and even as a pastor, we come in, and you know, we're tired, we're weary. We've been, we've been struggling, we've been laboring, and we come in, and you think, boy, you know, I just, just, just come because you come. Eh? And all of a sudden, eh, somebody get up, Brother James, and sang a song. Eh? And it seemed like God just took that song and run a funnel eh, right down in this deep of your soul. Eh? Or my friend, the preacher may get up eh, and begin to preach. It looks like God just takes a big old funnel. Eh? A slick runs it right over on your soul eh, and just dumps it out. Eh? And the next thing you know, man, you're a street. You go out of here refreshed and rejoicing. You know why? Uh, my friend, there was help at the house of God. There's help with fellowship. There's help with a word. And my friend, there was help in this, in this meal barrel. It helped them from day to day. I'll tell you the church, there's help in the church. You don't get much help out yonder. They'll take everything you got. Uh, I told a little girl a while back, she's on dope. I was trying to talk to her. And, I, and she said, she talked about her friends, her friends, her friends, her friends. And I'm going to tell you, I said, I'm going to tell you what, when your friends get through with you, they're going to dump you. Yeah, right. I said, when they get through with you, but you ain't got no more money, and you can't buy no more of their dope, I said, they're going to dump you out and find somebody else that's got some money. I said, they're going to run off. And I said, I said, you look at you. I said, your life's all messed up. And I said, you look awful. And I said, your eyes is all darkened and everything. And I said, do you think them little old boys like you? But I said, when they get real, look for a wife, they're going to pass you up. Amen. And I said, there's not no help in where you're going. And I said, I'll tell you, if you get to church eh, and get under the sound of the gospel, there's help for your life. There's help for you. Eh? And my friend, boy, you glad. My friend, there's help in the church. Eh? My friend, you got to have the church. Somebody said, I can live just as good outside of the church as I can inside. Uh, outside as good as I can inside. I'll tell you what, you can't do that. Eh? My friend, I'll tell you, I don't know about you. I tried that. I tried that. To, uh, what do they call that? Mike, that, that service where you sit home and watch it. Uh, what is it? Live stream. I tried that one time. It didn't really feel good. I was having some sickness. And I told my wife, I said, I think we'll just sit here and, and listen. And we listened to Emmanuel Baptist Church. And y'all singing, y'all preaching. Uh, and you've done a good job. But I told my wife, I said, man, I can't do this. Uh, I said, I, all I want to do is get up and cook some eggs and drink some coffee. Uh, I said, I ain't interested in holding this thing and looking at it. Uh, I said, if I had to do this, I'd starve to death. Spiritually, I said, I'd starve to death. Uh, so easy to put that thing on hold. Uh, go scramble you some eggs. Say, I'll come back later. You don't come back later. Right? My friend, you don't never go back to it. Right? And I'll tell you what, ain't nothing like getting at the, ch getting, getting the church. Right? Hey, I like, to, I like to watch advertisements on television. Right? See different things about food and everything. But I tell you what, I've watched all them advertisements. Don't help me a bit. Right? And my friend, it don't satisfy that hunger. It creates a hunger. Right? Boy, ain't like it coming to church. Right? And my friend, you're just hungry. Right? And boy, somebody feeds you so. Right? And you go out here satisfied. Right? I'm telling you what, there's hope. There's help in the church. Right? I tell you, I love the church. I want to be a part of the church. I want to be faithful to church. I want to be involved in the church. Why? There's only hope we got is the church. 
The only help that's any worth anything is in the church. There's help here. <laughs> you know what? Just fellowshipping is helping. Huh? Dear brother, dear, dear brother, I hate to keep using them, but I, I believe God sent them by. They're just a blessing. And you know what he told me? He said, you know what? He said, uh, he said we don't travel much. He said, we don't travel much. And he said, uh, uh, we don't get gone much because of the way they have to work uh, on the farm. They don't hardly get days off. And, and he, said, he said, I told my wife when we left, he said, I hope we can find the church. And you know what? He came in here this morning. And it was just, I mean, it just amazing how that thing worked. I just walked into the breakfast room. He just standing there. He didn't say, hello, good morning. First thing he said, where are you from? And I said, Tennessee, where are you from? And we struck up. Next thing you know, he said, I'm looking for a church. God sent him over here. And you know what he told me? He said, man, you know what? He said, I come over here and the folks was friendly and said the singing was good, the preaching was good. He said, I can go home. He said, the ark was okay. But he said, I got help. I got help at the church. I'll tell you what, thank God I'm glad there's help in the church. My friend, don't leave the church. Don't criticize the church. Stay with the church. That's where our hope is. That's where our help's at. In the church of the word of the worship of the Lord. Amen. Uh, I told you this simple thought. Uh, and not only, not only was there help in the church and help in the church, there's happiness in the church. There's happiness in this mill barrel. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about you, but when I, when I walk the door and Mama's got, cook, got something cooking, <laughs> I, don't, I ain't never walked in there, Brother Mike, in case of cooking, and I never have walked in the house and smelled that and said, Oh, Lord, cooking again. <laughs> 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 I ain't never done that. Oh, Lord, I'm going to have to eat that again. <laughs> Hope it ain't the same old thing. <laughs> you know, I never have come. Boy, I come in there and smell it. You know what? I feel like getting me a biscuit and sop the air until she gets it ready. <laughs> Amen? Huh? Yeah, I was washing the car. I washed the truck a while back, and she was a cooking. And, man, it, it was coming out there at the carpool where I was at. And she come over and said, you about ready to eat? I said, if you'll bring me a biscuit, I'll sop the air with it. Uh, and my friend, I said, it's good out here. Uh, boy, ain't it good, my friend, when you can smell, when you come in the door, uh, and you can smell the goodness of God. Uh, and, my friend, it brings happiness to your heart. Boy, you sit out that good old meal, and, my friend, you eat. Uh, and, my friend, you eat that meal. And, my friend, listen, uh, God uh, blesses you, and you eat it, and talk, and fellowship, and and my friend, next thing you know, you're happy. And my friend, I'll tell you, there's nothing like the church to come in here and fellowship one another. Hear the preaching. Get some food. And we'll leave here happy in your soul because you came to the house of God. Uh, this is better than anything the world's got. The world always leaves you hanging out there. My wife, I don't know if you ever do this. and I don't know if it's right or wrong. I don't know, but she done it anyway. She, she watched this series, this little, uh, what do I call that, Lisa? Movie series, is that what you call it? I'm not a movie person, but she taught me in to watch it with Three or four episodes in each. Uh, help me out, uh, Sydney. There's four, what? Four seasons or something, yeah. I can tell I don't know nothing about it. I'm sitting on the couch watching it. And she's watching it, and I was watching it. And I got hooked too, watched that one it had three seasons, three seasons. And the, the, the third season, the last one, left me hanging. <laughs> I looked at her and I said, you mean, you mean we spent a week, every evening, drinking a cup of coffee, watching this, and I'm hanging out here. <laughs> what are they going to do? <laughs> What's this thing going to do? What's that thing going to do? She said, I don't know. That's it. I said, it. <laughs> she said, there's a fourth season supposed to come. I said, call them and tell them to hurry up. <laughs> I can't sleep. I won't know what's going on. Just let me hanging out there. I'm still hanging out there wondering what's going on. My boy, he sold the house that day, and he said, Daddy, he said, said his wife's name's Heather. He said, Heather, Heather's wanting to watch this series. I said, don't watch it. <laughs> He said, why is it bad? Got cussing in it? I said, no. It leaves you hanging. I said, you watch it all week long. I said, at the end, you don't have no clue what's going on. No ending to it. <laughs> I don't mean to be funny, but that's just the way it was. I told her, I said, don't ever ask me what's watching them. I ain't watching them. I don't like that. Either. I like to know what happened. If I get killed, kill them. Let me know it. <laughs> Amen. 
Whatever's going to happen, let it happen. Boy, it ain't that way when you get to church. <laughs> we don't leave here hanging. <laughs> if you let the Holy Ghost work in your heart, you won't leave here hanging. You'll go out of here satisfied, complete. Amen. You'll leave out of here knowing but you've been helped from the Lord. You'll leave out of here happy. Happy. I mean, you'll leave here thinking, boy, man, didn't we have a time today? Amen. I don't know about you. I like to leave. I like to leave the house of God happy. Amen. I like to leave. I like to get up from the table when I ate happy. Huh? I have got up from the table and not be happy. Huh? We ate at a place one time, and they, these people wanted to come home and eat with them. Me and Kay and Kevin, we went over and eat with them, and, uh, and I could eat everything they had, and we left hungry. Huh? Yeah, we left. They thought they had a big old meal. I thought, man, I could eat all this. I told my boy, I said, just, just nibble and get what you can, son. <laughs> Burger King's right out in the road. Uh, we got out of there. <laughs> we got out of there. And I mean, we hadn't gotten the van good. Old, Kevin, old Kevin's head came up about back that seat. He said, are we still going to Burger King? I said, as fast as I can get there. <laughs> Left hungry. I wasn't satisfied. <laughs> I, I don't mean to be funny, but I did. I, 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 did, I didn't get enough. Boy, don't you hate to go somewhere you know? Boy, when you come to the house of God. I mean, if you, if, you, if you pay attention, every time you come, God's got something for you. Right. <laughs> I don't know about you. When I go to the house of God, I'm just happy to see everybody. Amen. I used to go to church. I earned it. Stand up on our porch. Our porch is up high like this at, at the church. And Tammy, you all been down there. You know, had to go up them steps. You stand up here and you look down through there. And I stand up there and, and everybody said, what you come an hour early for? I said, I'd like to watch the saints come pulling in. And they come past, well, there's old so-and-so, there's so-and-so. Hey, there comes so-and-so, and I'd be standing on the porch waving at everybody, you know. And when they come in, I'd shake her hand. <laughs> Done waved at them, but I'd shake her hands. And, you know, I was just happy to see everybody. Amen. Amen. Happy to preach and happy to sing and happy to give and happy to worship God. i am tell you what, there's happiness in that barrel. I mean, hey, you know, you know, I thought about this. I thought about this. This just this, this run across my brain. Can you imagine that little boy? Now, he, 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 he didn't worry about that before. He didn't worry about that before, but the famine was on. And he got down to just a handful of meal and a cruise of oil. And how much? And you know what she said? She said, I'm gonna, we're going we're gonna to make a little cake and eat this and die. Huh? Man, God said, make me one first. <laughs> Amen. Boy, if that had been most of us, said, preacher, you're on your own, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Said, make me one first. And said, I guarantee if you make me one first, then go back and make you one. The cruise of all will not fail for the rest of the famine. Can't you imagine that little boy? Now, I believe this is what I believe. This is what I believe. I don't believe God filled it back up. I believe every time. I believe every time they made, I believe every time they made breakfast, <laughs> she scraped the bottom out. Uh, can't you imagine that little old boy looks at Whoa, Mama, you didn't leave none for supper. Said, it ain't supper yet. <laughs> I don't know, maybe that little boy, Philip, maybe that little boy come by there today and he look in there. <laughs> Man, it's still empty. He look in there and it's still empty. Uh, it's kind of like coming over here to church when ain't nobody here. Yeah. Spooky, ain't it? Yeah. Uh, I don't care if you come in the daytime. I've had to sleep in these churches before. I preached a meeting and had a bed in the, in the uh, army cot in the baptistry back here. And that's where I slept. You had to go out of the church, out of the baptistry, go all the way back down through your like y'all's church, go to the bathroom. Who wants to get up in the middle of the night by yourself in the middle of the dark church, go to the bathroom? Huh? <laughs> Come on now. I believe when you when when you when y'all leave here, demons move in here. <laughs> you don't believe it, Brother James. Come over here and after everybody leaves the style night tonight. You hear the floors cracking, you'll hear everything in the world. It's empty. Uh, ain't no jaw really coming over here in this old empty church. Try it sometimes. <laughs> Just come over here and sit. <laughs> Shout and holler. Woo, man, I'm glad I'm in this old church. No, you'd be scared to death. Uh, some of you big brave guys, you'd be brave. This guy here's back big enough he could whoop a bear. I guarantee you he'd come over by himself, you'd be sitting there. You hear that door back. Uh, huh? Come on now, help me. And every time that boy come by, he looked at him, boy, it's empty. It didn't bring no happiness. 
A boy about supper time. He'd go by there. Woo, woo mama! <laughs> hey, it's back. We get to eat again. Eat again. Boy, it's good. You know, old church may be empty all week. But boy, about Wednesday night, you come in here and people start coming in here. The house of God starts filling up. And my friend, the shooting music gets to playing. And my friend, listen, you know what we do? We ought to jump on holler. Woo! We get to eat again! <laughs> And Sunday morning you come in here, my friend, you walk in here, and here comes all the saints of God. My friend, the preacher's standing up here, walking to and fro. You can tell he's about to bust the preach, and singers are ready to sing. And my friend, Brother Slate, gets up there and leads the singing. His brother leads the choir, and next thing you know, he's a preacher. And you know what? You ought to jump up and holler, Woo! Eat again! I'm glad I'm at the house of God. It brings happiness. <laughs> happiness at the house of God. Amen. And let me say this. i got to quit. Listen. It said uh, that uh, this barrel, there's not only hope in this barrel, and help in this barrel, there was help, happiness in the barrel, but there was a hereafter in this Amen. barrel. He said in that verse, he said, For thus saith the Lord, the barrel of meals shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. He said, I'm just going to tell you what, what's in this barrel is going to last. This barrel is going to last to the end. Uh, in other words, he said, you, you can eat today, but you don't have to worry about tomorrow. You're going to eat tomorrow. And the next day, and the next day. I think it was a year passed, and the famine was three and a half years. So there was two and a half more years still out there. And he said, for the next two, two and a half years while the famine's on, don't worry about the, the, the cruise that's going to be here. And when the famine's all over with, it's still going to be here. And I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> the only thing has got to hear after is the church. Right. Walmart ain't going. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Come on now. Huh? Wall Street ain't going. Right. Right. Penn Station ain't going, I wished. <laughs> huh? You know, the only thing that's going to last in this life is the church. Right. The only thing God's coming back after is the church. Yeah. The only thing that's got a promise of a hereafter. Heaven and earth shall pass away. It's a world. Hey, this old world as we know it, it's going to burn. It's going to, grow, it's going to dissolve. It's going to go away. And the only thing, the only thing of this life that's going to last is the church. The world looks at us now and says, well, it's just the church. <laughs> that's just the church. Shut the church down. It's not important. It's important enough it's going to outlast anything they got. It's going to outlast the White House. Amen. I'm glad I'm a part of the church because there's going to be a day. Hey, listen, listen. The Bible talks about over here in the book of Ephesians. He says in that verse, Scripture, husband loves your wife, even as Christ also loved the church, gave himself for it, that he might sanctify it and cleanse it and wash it with the water of the word, that he might present it to himself. A glorious church. God's Amen. building the church. One of these days he's going to come back for it. And when he comes back to this world in the rapture, you don't think anything's going to go out of here? The church. Yeah. Huh? Amen. I don't know about you, but I think I'm just going to stick with the church. When all this was over with, when all this was over with, you know what? And I just wrote these thoughts down today, so I'll have to study a little more and get a little more out of it. But you know what? I thought about this. It's all over with, Brother Mike. You know what I believe she said? Oh, I'm glad. Kept that meal, Oh, yeah. In fact, in fact, she was out there gathering. Think about this. She was out there gathering two sticks. If she was thought it was the end of it, Brother James, she could have just busted up the meal burn, burn it, and cook that large cake. She said, I think I'll hang on to the meal barrel. <laughs> you can close the church if you want to. You can do, but I'm telling you what, there's hope. There's help. There's happiness. There's a hereafter in the church. Amen. Somebody said, well, the church ain't, the church ain't what it used to be. Well, I'm going to tell you what. The, the, the quantity, the quantity. There may be the day that mail barrel was full. Now it's just a handful. The quantity, the, 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 the amount may not be much, but the quality was just as real. Yeah. As just as real in that handful as it was yeah. if it had been full. In the church today, we may not be busting out the scene, but she's just the quality of the church. Hey, the book, the book is still... It's just as good as it's ever been. The work of the Holy Ghost is just as worship, just as good as it's ever been. The promises of the church is just as good as it's ever been. Amen. Amen. The hope of the church is just as good as it's ever been. Amen. The only thing has got to hear after is the church. Right. I think I'll just stay with the church, don't you? Amen. I've been to church. I went to church nine months before I was born. Been in church all my life. 
all my life. I don't know what it is not to have a church life. I really don't. People talk about not having church life, and I, 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 I don't understand that because I've always had church life. Amen. It wasn't all going. It's you get ready and go. And we went to church. We went to church every service. They had five nights revival. We was there every night. Daddy preached a meeting. We went with him. We slept in the floorboard of the car. Four of us kids. That's back four seat belts. Somebody remember you used to get back up in that back window and sleep. Yeah. Boy, if you was lucky enough to get that, you had it made, buddy. Mm-hmm. Just hope nobody run out in front of you and daddy hit the car, hit the brake, and here you come. <laughs> It'd be one in the seat, couple on the floorboard, we'd sleep. Get home at three and four o'clock in the morning, get up and go to school. Never miss a day of school, never miss no church. Amen. Amen. Raised in the church all my life. Been a part of the church. Saved through the church. Called to preach through the church. Preached in the church all my life. Amen. Amen. I think I'm just gonna stay with it and go out with it. That's right. <laughs> Well, wouldn't that be a blessing the Lord come tonight? Right. You know what happened? All of us that's saved by the grace of God, church of the firstborn, you know what? We'll rise. Go out of here. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, now help me out. Say this. I love the church. Say it. Come on, say it. I love the church. Say, I love my church. Say it again. I love the church. I love my church. Thank God. I'm through, Dave. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.